Hey guys, CB Super here. Uh, today we're going to be going over stabilization inside of DaVinci Resolve 16.1. Alright, so one thing to note is in DaVinci Resolve 16 and 16.1, uh, you can actually access stabilization right inside of the edit page, which is really nice. You used to be able to do it in the color page, and the color page still has it, and you can still do some stabilization, obviously, in Fusion. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right in here. Let's go ahead and play you this footage real quick. You'll notice that it's pretty shaky. It's uh, just ATVing up in the mountains the other day. Uh, it's on a Hero 2. The old Hero GoPros didn't have any kind of sensor or image stabilization. So one thing that's really nice is if you come up here into the inspector and you click on the video, you'll notice that there is a stabilization tab here. If you just double click on that, you'll you come over here and you'll notice there are some settings. There's three settings. There's perspective, similarity, and translation. Perspective pretty much just uh, uses pan, tilt, zoom, and rotation to uh, stabilize your footage, but sometimes you can get some like weird warping effects. And if you do get those weird warping effects, try it on similarity because it also uses pan, tilt, zoom, and rotation, but it does it in a, in a way that's slightly different than the uh, perspective. Translation is just going to use the X and Y axis and it's going to try and translate your footage, but you might have a little bit more cropping. Um, you're going to have a couple of different um, checkboxes down here. Usually just leave camera lock off. Uh, camera lock is for when, you're, when your camera is already like really stable. Maybe it's on like a gimbal or something. Leave zoom checked on because uh, what it's going to do is it's going to automatically zoom in the footage to get rid of whatever edges are on the on the outside of the image. So cropping ratio, if it's all the way down to the left, it's going to crop in more versus if it's all the way up to one, it's not going to crop in at all. So it's not going to be very effective if at all. So I usually um, just leave it all the way cropped in just all the way down to 0 0.250 and that's just because um, trust that it's just gonna do what's best for the footage uh, and then I'll play around with the smoothness more than anything so I like to turn the smoothness up you know just a little bit maybe to like 0.5 to start with and then hit stabilize and see how well it works so as it's working it's stabilizing just note that every time you change something you're gonna have to go back through and re-click that stabilize button Okay, so it's analyzed and you notice that it's changed some of the uh, some of the cropping there. Now, if I come over here and I just hit the preview, we'll notice that there is a little bit of warping towards the outside here from the uh, from it like zooming in and out. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it over to similarity and see if that fixes any of those issues. All right, so that's done. We're going to go ahead and play it here. So it's not much better. And again, we don't have anything in the foreground that is going to, uh, you know, ground the stabilization effect. So I'm actually going to try translation and turn the smoothness down just a little bit and re-hit stabilize, let it analyze. So you can see that it's working hard. Um, I'm actually going to turn the smoothness all the way up, re-hit stabilize, and you'll notice that all it did is it kind of cropped in really quickly and it didn't need to reanalyze. So let's see how well it's working now. So that's pretty good. Um, that's probably about as good as it's going to get. And that's a really good point to note that um, not all footage is going to be able to be saved. So if it's really shaky, uh, you're going to have to crop in a good amount. And one thing to note is that the best way to stabilize your footage is probably put it on a gimbal. And then, of course, there's also lens stabilization. And some cameras have uh, in-body stabilization or some kind of IBIS. Once you get it on the timeline, uh, you're, you're pretty much at the mercy of your stabilization here. So that's pretty good. I mean, that's better. I didn't know if we were actually going to be able to save this footage or not, but I would I would be able to use that. I would definitely be able to use that the way that it is. Now let's check out this other shot here, which um, is just a helicopter uh, that I shot the other day. Now this was shot using the GoPro Hero Black 7, which has its own um, pretty decent stabilization. So I'm gonna just ping pong this real quick and then so you notice it's still a little bit shaky, but I think we can probably clean this up so it almost looks like a pretty decent shot. So if I just click on the video here and I come back over to stabilization, I'm going to leave it on perspective and I'm just going to smooth it out just a little bit. 
and let's see how all well of this works. Let it analyze and let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so that smoothed out the movements pretty good. Um, and actually, I'm not seeing too much warping. There is a, there's a lot of lens distortion here, which we could fix up a little bit later. Uh, you'll notice like it looks pretty rounded, but that's also because I was shooting it on the widest setting on the GoPro. Um, so that works. Um, and one thing that you may want to do is just turn the smoothness all the way down so that when you stabilize, like you're just, you're just taking out the gross movements and it's barely doing anything and that's probably going to give it your best shot at making it actually still usable because once it starts getting some serious warping on the sides it's mostly going to be unusable so that's how you use the stabilization in the edit tab which is in my opinion the easiest way to use it you um you can also obviously go to fusion and you can track the footage and then you could uh, stabilize it and in the uh, color tab, if you come over to the tracker section, click on window and go to stabilizer, you'll notice here down on the bottom that you have all of the same settings. You have the cropping ratio, smoothness, strength, camera. You can change between perspective, similarity, and translation. You have all those same settings and you have the same image. Um, and if, if for whatever reason, if that's an easier way to work for you, or if you are a colorist and you just want to stabilize one shot real quick, I mean, maybe that'd be an easier way to work with it. Personally, I think the edit tab is a little bit easier because you, um, you can stabilize things as you're moving forward. So that's pretty much it for me. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.